Man, you wouldn't believe the drama I witnessed at my local diner last night. I'm just sitting there munching on some fries and minding my own business when all hell breaks loose. Let me spill the tea on this wild situation. So, I'm at this spot, right? It's one of those joints where the coffee's too strong, and the jukebox is always playing something from the 80s. I've been coming here for ages. It's my kind of place. Now, across the aisle, there's this lady causing a ruckus. Let's call her Drama Queen, because what the hell? Drama Queen's got this Karen haircut, and she's treating the wait staff like they kicked her puppy. I'm talking eye rolls. Finger snaps, the whole shebang. I'm just rolling my eyes and trying not to get involved. Then comes the Chamo Mill Tea Saga. Drama Queen decides she's in the mood for some fancy tea, right? She asks the waitress for Chamo Mill. But the poor girl has to break the news. They don't have it. Drama Queen ain't having it, though. She tells the waitress to search harder and, if unsuccessful, fetch her some hot water with lemon slices. Now, this waitress is a trooper. She comes back with exactly what Drama Queen asked for. But, oh boy, Drama Queen's fuse is short. She looks at the hot water like it's an alien invasion and decides to play some twisted version of water sports. She snatches the cup and, without missing a beat, tosses the hot water right at the waitress. <laughs> it's like a scene out of a bad reality TV show. The poor girl's clothes are drenched and she's on the verge of tears. That's when I decide enough is enough. I can't stand by and watch this lady ruin someone's day. I pipe up, hey, you can't be treating people like that. Drama Queen turns her fury on me. Mind your damn business, she snaps. But I'm not backing down. No way, lady. I'm calling the cops. You just assaulted the poor waitress. So I whip out my phone, dial 911, and start telling them the whole messy situation. Drama Queen's yelling, demanding a manager like she's entitled to some royal treatment. The cops show up like the cavalry. They take one look at the sop and waitress and drama queen still flaring nostrils and they know something's up. I spill the whole story. And luckily, there are a couple of other folks in the diner who witnessed the whole thing. They chime in, adding their two cents about drama queen's reign of terror. The cops decide they've seen enough daytime drama and slap the cuffs on her. As she's getting escorted out, drama queen's still causing a scene. This is outrageous. I'll sue all of you. I just shake my head. Some people, man. The waitress is still visibly shaken and I feel for her. The manager's apologizing left and right and they comp my fries as a thank you for stepping in. The whole incident leaves me thinking about how people can lose their minds over the smallest things. I mean, who throws hot water at someone because they didn't get their fancy tea? It's beyond me. The diner's vibe returns to normal. But the story of Drama Queen, the chamomile tea, and the waitress with nerves of steel becomes the talk of the joint. It's like a cautionary tale passed from booth to booth. So this happened to me a few years ago, and I just wanted to share it here. And it is a long one. Senior year of high school, I was taking a plane to visit my grandma. The flight went from Baltimore to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh to Vegas, then Vegas to Boise, the flight from Baltimore was almost empty, and I was southwest, so I could choose my own seat, and I was on the same plane until Vegas. I selected the last row of the plane by the window, put my earbuds in, and took a nap till Pittsburgh. When the plane landed, I went to the bathroom while people were getting onto the plane. To save my spot, I left my backpack in my seat and put my jacket on the seat and left. When I got back, I noticed that this pregnant lady sitting in my seat and her husband sitting in the aisle seat with my jacket thrown on the ground in the aisle with my backpack underneath with a laptop in it, I got really annoyed. I pointed out that I was previously sitting in the window seat and I wanted to know if I could have my seat back. Can't you see that I'm pregnant and need this seat? She said aggressively. I then looked at the husband and asked if he could please scoot over and sit next to his wife. This guy looked me in the eyes and said, sorry, but we are allowed to choose our own seats and I chose the aisle seat. Being a high school senior, I wasn't that big of a guy, but I was still not happy to be sitting in the center seat. Realizing that this was a losing argument and I wasn't going to get any leverage over this lady, I decided to grip my teeth and bear it, collect my stuff, and move into the middle seat. The second I sat down, the lady said, you can't have your backpack in your seat. You're going to have to find a place to put it. I'm just going to put it under my seat. Where am I going to put my feet then? I don't know, not under my seat. I said sarcastically. Suddenly, I felt someone grab my collar. The husband pulled me inches from his face and said, 
Don't talk to my wife or the baby like that. You will say you're sorry. I was shocked. Not only was this guy grabbing me in public, but at the time I was only 17 and still considered a minor. But not wanting to make a deal out of this, I gave the most insincere, I'm sorry to the woman, and put my earbuds in as the flight was getting ready to take off. While taxiing, the lady kept trying to get my attention by yelling in my ear and snapping her fingers inches in front of my face before she finally pulled my earbuds out. You need to turn your electronics off during takeoff, she said. Now, my dad was a pilot for 30 years, and he confirmed that electronics don't interfere with communications. It is mostly a formality so that people pay attention to the emergency instructions. So I ignore her, since we are literally less than a minute from taking off. In rage, she spans a flight attendant button so that one comes. We also had to hold takeoff until this issue was solved. The flight attendant runs over and asks what is wrong expecting an emergency. He won't turn off his electronics before flight. He's trying to end us, she exclaims. Realizing everyone is staring at us when the flight attendant asks me to turn it off, I oblige. After I turned off, she starts to lecture me about how she was right and I was wrong, rubbing how the flight attendant proved her right. So the flight is in the air, and when the intercom tells me we can use electronics, I put my earbuds in and crank it. About five minutes into the flight, I feel aggravated tapping on my shoulder. I turn and look at the woman. You need to turn that down. It is bad for the baby. While I was listening to the music louder than normal, it still wasn't to the point that an unborn baby would be able to hear and be able to understand. Shocked, I responded with no, but the second she reached for the flight attendant button, I said that I would. I did that trick where you turn your volume down two times and then up once so that it looks like you turned it down three times. Better? I asked. More she responded, so I went down one more. And before I could put my earbuds in, she said, it is proper etiquette to talk to people you're sitting next to. But I just ignored her. I sit back and try and close my eyes. And amazingly, this work, I fall asleep for about an hour. It was a five-hour flight. When I woke up, this woman had her foot on my backpack with a laptop in it. So I adjust my foot so that it would be uncomfortable for her to continue to keep her feet the way they were. She immediately stood up and I thought she was going to yell given her ability to overreact. But it turns out she was just getting up to go to the bathroom. She gets past me and her husband when a brilliant idea pops into my head. The second she steps into the bathroom, I get ready to get up and move my stuff over to the window seat. And as I grab my backpack and shift my momentum over, I feel a hand grab me. I did not take into account the husband. You're not taking my wife's seat, he said. Sir, I have to warn you that you are grabbing a minor, and if I feel like it at any second, I could cry that you are attacking me. I respond as he lets go, and I move over to the seat I had before. When she gets back, she is furious, demanding that I move seats now to the point that the flight attendant comes over to see what is going on. And this time, she sides with me. When she asks her husband to make me move, I look him dead in the eyes, and he goes back to reading his book. And she sits in the middle seat, looking very angry. Thankfully, I moved seats because she was up and down in her seat, having to go to the bathroom every 15 minutes. And that was pretty much the rest of the flight, except how she intercepted my bag of pretzels when the drink card came. I responded by closing the shade to the window as we started to land at the Las Vegas airport. Once off the plane, I went to Burger King to get a drink and some food. Then I got at my next gate and found the last seat. I scarfed down my fries and burger walk across the hall literally 10 feet from my seat to throw away my garbage, and when I turn to go back to my seat, I see the same lady now sitting in the seat I had my bag in. She had moved it to the floor right in front of her, then she shot me this big, smug grin thinking she had won. Somewhat defeated by losing two seats to this lady, losing sleep, and my patience, it was time for action. I walked over to her to gather my things, and as I got to her, I looked her dead in the eyes, raised my right hand out, fingers spread, and hovered it right over her stomach, looked down at my hand, then back to her eyes. I just cursed your baby. I say, straight-faced, turn around 180, walk across the hall, and sit down on the floor, staring at her intensely. Now, I don't believe in curses, nor do I think I have the ability to place a curse, but this lady believed it. Her face was left expressionless and she just started weeping to herself as I sat and watched. When her husband came over to see what was wrong and she told him, he instantly stormed over to me and knocked the drink out of my hand, grabbed me by the collar and got right in my face, listen here you little jerk. Security guards immediately came, grabbed the man and detained him. 
the FEA doesn't mess around with who they hire. One guard asked me why this guy was angry and I said that his wife had taken my seat and I made a comment under my breath and he got upset with me. The officer asked for my name and identification and saw that I was a minor. He asked if I wanted to press charges and I told him yes, but that I also didn't want to miss my flight. He understood and let me go, then informed the Southwest Airline gate attendant to please keep track of me in case we needed more information. This meant that I got to get on early and I chose the first seat I could. I'll see to see if this lady would get on the plane since she was sitting in the same gate as my flight. She never got on the plane and it takes off. Halfway through the flight, the flight attendant asked me if I put a curse on the baby and I responded with, I don't know, magic. 20 minutes later, the flight attendant told me that, unfortunately, I would not be able to press charges on them due to being a minor, but that they missed their flight and they would have to buy a new ticket to their final destination with another airline. With five words, I cost this horrible woman and her abusive husband around $500. Many years ago, in a land a few blocks away, I loved to ride my bicycle. Single mother, no car. It was nothing really special, but it got me all over town. I mostly kept on sidewalks because traffic can be filled with too many entitled drivers. I got to a corner and saw a car coming up the side street to the stop sign. The driver slowed way down, so I assumed he would stop where he was supposed to. He didn't, my bad, because I had already started to ride my bike off the curb into the street in front of him. You guessed it, we crashed. I squirmed my way from under the rest of my bike in the car and started checking myself for injuries. Just a bruised knee, so I was very lucky. The driver got out of his car and yelled at me for being in his way. Didn't ask if I was okay, and I yelled at him for running the stop sign. A passerby checked on me and called the police. While I was safely back on the sidewalk with the passerby, the driver pulled his car about five, six feet forward, dragging my bike, I think he knew he was in trouble, so he altered the accident site to look like he was already around the corner, because when the police came, that's what he told them. He said he stopped proceeded around the corner and I just barreled out into his path. The police officer asked for my story, and I asked him to ask the driver to back his car up a bit, and I'd show the officer exactly where we both were at the time of the accident. He was wondering how I could be so positive, but then, once the driver moved his car, I pointed to the scrapes in the street that my bike had made when I was hit. The driver got the ticket, and I got his information. I wrote several letters to him, asking him to replace my bike, but he ignored them. I finally had to take him to small claims court to be compensated for my squished bike. He didn't show up. The judge reviewed all my evidence and awarded me the cost of a new bike plus pain and suffering for my bruised knee. The court served him those papers, but he ignored them too. Now, I'm frustrated. No money, no bike. And the real entitlement begins. I found another second-hand bike and started riding around again. I decide to pedal by the driver's house just because I'm curious, and there's a for-sale sign on his lawn. So he's trying to move and make a get away just to avoid paying me? I went home, gathered all my paperwork regarding the judgment, and headed to the courthouse. There, I filed a line against his house for the judgment amount. Then I called his realtor and informed her of the judgment and line. She called the driver. Now, six months or so after the accident, I finally hear from the driver. He called and threatened me over the phone, telling me he had witnesses who could prove I was wrong about how the accident happened. I informed him that the time to have brought those witnesses was at the court date, which he missed. He told me that I better take the line off the house. I refused. He tried to tell me he could sell it. Then he would pay me. I told him, that's not the way it works. Pay me and I take the line off. He growled something and hung up on me. Two months later, I get a call from the realtor who wants to stop by and drop off a check. I signed the line release and got a cashier's check and my kids had a great Christmas. Edit. For all those who are wondering, his actual ticket was for not having insurance, not for hitting a pedestrian in a crosswalk. 